Immediately after the civil war, also known as the Biafran War, military coup after military coup continued to bedevil the Nigerian nation. In this video, we will discuss the history of Nigeria's political transition from 1975 till 1999 and beyond. Please stay tuned. Hello, 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 His Plus. Welcome back to His Blue Media. Gabriel here. If you are new here, consider subscribing to this channel and book the like button on this video. Thank you. The Goan regime we saw the country through the civil war that lasted from 1967 to 1970 became increasingly unpopular. On the 29th of July 1975, the government was overthrown with an announcement on Radio Nigeria, later Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, by Colonel Joseph Namvan Garba. The government of Goan had proposed 1976 as a date to transit back to civil rule but was unable to keep to this timeline. The regime was also accused of economic mismanagement, disregard for public opinion, high-level corruption, among other factors. This ushered in the Moritala Mohamed Obasanjo regime. The Moritala regime was careless about security, and this would later prove costly as he was murdered a few months later. His deputy, Lieutenant General Obasanjo, ruled until 1979 when military sponsored elections produced a civilian administration of President Shehu Shagari. The Shagari administration lasted until 1983 when it was deposed by another military coup, this time led by General Muhammadu Buhari, the current president of Nigeria. The Shagari administration was characterized by violent, fractious politics and widespread corruption under a new constitution drafted by the military. General Muhammad Buhari deposed Shagari late in 1983. Personality-wise, he was austere and he had little tolerance for political elite corruption. As a result, Buhari was deposed by General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida in 1985 with the apparent approval of the elite. In an era of rampant corruption and growing repression, Babangida pursued economic and political reforms. During his reign, Nigeria joined the Organization of the Islamic Conference and established diplomatic relations with Israel. As a climax of his political reforms, he organized Nigeria's best election ever in 1993. However, under military pressure to reject Yoruba businessman MKO Abiola's presidential election victory, he annulled those elections. Already on his way out, he made way for a caretaker civilian administration led by Ernest Shunekon. General Sani Abacha ousted Shunekon a few weeks later and ruled in an increasingly brutal manner until his death in 1998. Several human rights violations occurred during his presidency, including the judicial assassination of Ken Saruiwa, a Niger Delta activist and writer. Nigeria was designated an international pariah. The Commonwealth expelled Nigeria. Canada closed its high commission in Lagos, and the United States reduced the size of its USAID mission in Nigeria. Individual military officers' self-enrichment was made possible throughout the post-Civil War era by massive oil revenue combined with weak institutions of governance that were little or not accountable to the public. Militarization and centralized government power went hand in hand. Nigeria's power became far more centralized than its federal label would suggest. Beginning with Gowon, successive military governments attempted to manage ethnic and religious conflicts by establishing an ever-increasing number of states, including the Federal Capital Territory and the majority of which are funded by the federal government. Many of these states are dominated by a single ethnic group, with each of the big three ethnic groups dominating several of the states. Paradoxically, this mobilization has increased the power of the federal government because so many states rely entirely on it for nearly all of their revenue. Most states and local governments generate little revenue through taxation on their own. Few Nigerians pay any direct taxes. More positively though, for political stability, the proliferation of new states has provided additional arenas for elite competition and enrichment, as well as aided in preventing Nigeria from splintering into multiple antagonistic states, as nearly occurred during the Biafra War. 
while the military portrays itself as a unified caste in contrast to chaotic civilian society, it has in reality been a cockpit of rivalry and intrigue. However, military dictators always paid lip service to restoring democracy and returning the military to the barracks. Following Abacha's unexpected and suspicious death in 1997, the military government was exhausted and discredited both at home and abroad, and international opinion favored governance through ostensibly democratic institutions. A transition government was formed by a group of senior active duty and retired military officers, as well as a few businessmen. They established the current ostensibly civilian Fourth Republic in path because some of them were concerned about a popular uprising or agitation for a new constitutional convention that they would be unable to control. The military resurrected the constitutions of the Second and the Third Republics, which were based on Washington's presidential system. In the run-up to the Civil War, the Westminster-style parliamentary governors adopted at independence had lost its credibility. This interim military government also resurrected the National Progressive Conservative Party, the People's Democratic Party, as a vehicle for ending military rule on terms that would protect officer-specific interests. The military's interim caretakers and their civilian associate manipulated the PDP's choice of retired General Oleshigono Basinjo as its presidential candidate. Obasanjo was part of the military system despite being the target of Abacha's personal paranoia, having been imprisoned and nearly murdered. He was a Yoruba like Abiola and a Christian alternative to a string of discredited Muslim military dictators in the past. He had a fantastic international reputation and was well positioned to put an end to Nigeria's paria status. Olufalai, Obasanjo's primary presidential opponent was a Yoruba Christian as well. Despite having served as a minister of finance in the Babangida administration, he was a civilian. Obasanjo was elected president in 1999 despite the fact that the elections were clearly rigged by the military and its allies that former President Jimmy Carter loved the country rather than endorse them as the leader of the National Democratic Institute's election observation mission. Others, while acknowledging the fraud, saw the elections as a step forward because they ended overt military rule. Since then, the Nigerian Fourth Republic has been governed by theoretically equal executive, legislative and judicial branches according to its constitution. The states and the 774 local government authorities have significant powers and responsibilities, and they received just under half of the nation's oil and gas revenue through a complicated formula administered through the federal government's federation account in the spirit of federal character. Nonetheless, the oil producing state receive a special additional allocation with much larger budget than the rest. The Fourth Republic's constitution and institutions were imposed by the military without a popular referendum. This lack of democratic process received little attention at the time because the constitution closely followed its Second and Third Republic predecessors, which had resulted from broad consultation among political elites. However, by the time of the 2005-2006 political crisis associated with President Obasanjo's effort to retain power, members of the National Assembly were allegedly complaining that the popular referendum had not strengthened the constitution's democratic credentials. The 1998-99 transitional phase resulted in some albeit limited evolution in Nigerian governance. The active duty military no longer had a monopoly on cabinet positions, nor did governorships. The return of civilians to these positions broadened the arenas for elite competition within the traditional context of power sharing that dated back to the independence transition. The president, no longer a serving army general, was an ostensibly civilian president who only observed the forms of civilian government as convenient while retaining the substance and command culture of military rule without it more fragrant human rights violations. In the heady days following Abacha's death, democratic international opinion leaders welcomed the Fourth Republic uncritically as a fundamental break with a discredited military past. However, 
After more than two decades of the Fourth Republic, much of Nigeria's governance has remained largely unchanged from the military and in some ways the colonial period. Though it is true that the state-sponsored heinous human rights violations of the Abacha regime came to an end. However, political violence remained prevalent. Despite the efforts of civil society organizations, intellectuals and professional organizations such as the Nigerian Bar Association and the mostly free print press and independent radio, most Nigerians remain powerless and voiceless. The country's oil wealth benefited only a small elite and it did not lead to broad economic and social development. Many of the country's social statistics remain worst in comparison with other West African nations after over two decades of civilian rule. And far too many Nigerians, particularly in the northern region, still go hungry on a daily basis. If you enjoyed this video, please book the like button and subscribe to his pool media. To support our effort on this channel, you can buy us a super thanks. Just click the thanks button below and follow the prompts. I will see you in the next video. Peace.